Starting at H minus 48 hours, all personnel at Bikini Atoll were evacuated from the scattered islands and moved aboard task force ships. The only men to remain were the members of the firing party, protected in their bunker on NU Island. Once more, for the first time since Operation Crossroad in 1946, Bikini took its place in the story of atomic testing. The date was March 1, 1954. This photograph was taken from an airplane at 50 miles. The width of the fireball at this time, about three seconds after detonation, was four miles. The frame size of the picture is six by eight miles. The tremendous yield resulted in a serious fallout situation at Bikini and certain other atolls downwind from ground zero. These islands, functioning as accidental total fallout collectors, gave us our first real clues to the vast area affected by contamination from a high-yield surface burst. Within a few hours after that shot, a powdery snow-like fallout began on Ilinganai and Ranjalap atolls, then on Ranjarik, and finally on Uterik. By H plus 78 hours, 229 Marshall Islanders and 28 American service personnel were evacuated to Kwajalein for survey and treatment. It was tentatively estimated that the total gamma dose may have approached 70 Rentgens for the people on Alenganai, 175 Rentgens for some on southern Ranjalap, 80 on Ranjarik, and only 14 on Uterik. The dosages in these outer fringe areas did not appear to reach levels of immediate combat significance, nor did any severely incapacitating effects show up during treatment or observation on Kwajalein in excess of 40 days. A majority of those receiving the heaviest radiation reported some transient nausea on the first or second day, and there was a small incidence of gastrointestinal disturbances of short duration. Some loss of hair was a frequent symptom. Most of the Marshallese in this category developed multiple skin lesions, usually not severe, predominantly on the scalp, back of the neck, and feet. Only a few developed mild secondary infections during healing. The lesions appeared to be directly related to the amount of fallout deposited on the skin rather than to the generalized whole body radiation. It appeared that even one layer of clothing afforded substantial skin protection suggesting that the beta energies of the fallout material were relatively low. Significant blood changes were found in patients from the heavier fallout areas, including pronounced lowering of both platelet and leukocyte counts, which would reduce the body's ability to combat hemorrhage or infection. Returns to normal were not complete after six weeks. Subsequent surveys of the fallout islands, together with autopsies of domestic animals, have indicated that intake of contaminants through the lungs in cases of this sort will be negligible compared to the external radiation dose and will probably be negligible in comparison with the intake with food and water unless these supplies are protected. Hmm, possibly some new Air Force equipment. 